Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to On the Couch with me, Martin Colecliffe. My guest this morning is the director of Purely Balanced, a health and well-being company, and I met her uh, purely by chance. The Arthur Finlay College was putting some readings on online to help them with their revenue while it's closed down, and this young lady decided to pick me for a reading, and I was pleased she did because she told me such a wonderful story before, and I'm not going to tell you about it. I'm going to let the lady tell you about it. And here she is, Miss Emma Cook. Good morning, Emma. Good morning. Hiya. So, Emma, um, you told me about this wonderful company, but I want you to tell the viewers that are going to be watching this and just tell us about your company, what it is and what your company actually does. So, I'm Emma, and I run a company called Purely Balanced, and we are a how-to company on health and well-being. So what we've done is we've took the whole concept of health and well-being and we've condensed it into some bite-sized little areas where it actually gives you how-tos on how to help straight away. Quite modern for health and well-being. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I want to go back to some of the things we've discussed mm -hmm. like during the interview and that. And you had like this awakening and you mm -hmm. have this special gift. So how does this gift, how does your company and yourself, how does it help other people? Okay, so what we've done is we've put health and well-being into two categories. We've put it into sleep and mind management. And if you fix your sleep, you will eventually just start to fix the way that you think and feel. So what we've done is condensed two sessions into how to sleep smarter. So a five point switch off routine, which gets you to a deeper sleep state that in turn fixes your health and well-being mentally, physically, and emotionally. And then we've created a mind management course, which is called Be Kind to Your Mind, which helps the individual and the user then navigate through their day. And what I've done in there is I've integrated some breathing techniques and some energy rebalancing areas. Okay. And so what type of people come to you? What, what kind of problems do they have? I mean, you don't have to be personal with personal cases because I realise it's confidential. What sort of people come to you for this treatment? Everyone. So we get the, the reason why the, the company has been successful is because it's not just a, a one area kind of company. It fits everyone. I mean, everyone on the other side of this, no matter what your role is, wouldn't you like to sleep better? And that's what ended up happening. So I've had everything from people that don't have jobs to CEOs of companies. I've had some of the biggest companies around here and what I'm now learning are even on the, uh, the Fortune 500 stock exchange list contact me to help with them because everybody needs to sleep better and we've got a very proven technique that works instantly. Yeah. No. It's everyone. Yeah, in some of the conversations we've had, I mean, we've only known each other a week, and most of it, one was the private setting, and the rest has been through emails. And you did send me the emails, and I do promise you, I know you've read my book, and I've listened to the first one of your tapes because I've been so busy, and I found it very interesting. But you said, what led to this through your life? You've had some strange and wonderful experiences with the spirit world. Yeah. What led up to this, and what were these experiences? Okay, so when I was younger, um, and this is where the, the company's actually come from, when I was younger, I didn't know anything about spiritual sort of things. I come from a closed family. Uh, yeah. it, it's not talked about, it's not believed in, it's not anything. So when I was really young, uh, I used to have dreams, visions, and I actually had people visit my room when I was young, and my parents used to pass it off as it was just me dreaming. When I got older and my life got a little bit more closed off, what ended up happening was I would have thoughts, feelings, images, and again, I, I couldn't go anywhere or speak to anyone about it because nobody knew. When I got older, God's honest truth, I thought I was crazy. And I talked to Martin about this, I, I really did. And at one point I was this close to checking myself into somewhere because I could hear things, feel things. My emotions were like a roller coaster. And this is before bipolar was even a thing. So no one could understand it. And I was on my way to this place that I didn't tell anybody about to try and sort out what was going on with me. And I got a phone call from a medium in the area who I didn't know, but she knew one of my friends. The phone call come along and said, look, don't go anywhere. You know, you need to actually develop on this and come and see me because I'll talk about it. When I got there, she then proceeded to tell me about psychic abilities, spirit visits, healing. 
and all these different areas. I then went to development for a while and started to realize that modern day world, because they don't even assess or address this, the first answer from my GP, from I was above, was basically, well, let's just medicate and see where we go. And I just knew that there was something different. So along with developing, I also started to learn what was happening with me. So I started reading and researching and finding answers. And the further I went into science, the more spiritual I became, because even science goes back into how energy works and how this sort of works and then I ended up with learning how to to deal with that and yeah. bringing that back into what I actually do as a profession now I developed it into sort of tailored programs if you will sounds fantastic and it must have been difficult because you did tell me that uh, you went to some spiritualist churches for help did that help with you? Did it hinder you? Just tell us about that experience, you know. Yeah, so the, so the churches that I'd, um, I went to, it was a little bit kind of categorised. So if, if you didn't fit this and this and this, then it was a little bit still misunderstood and the development that they were doing didn't seem to be the development that I needed. Again, I didn't know this at the time. So I would sit in circle and as... as as refreshing as a lot of it was, and a lot of it was, there was areas that just didn't resonate with me. And this ability that I had didn't seem to come and go. It just seemed to be continuous. And there was no switching it off. It was just kind of there. I was in the background. And again, it was another sort of area of my world where I kind of then felt again like I didn't fit in. So when I didn't fit in uh, people that didn't believe and then people that did believe, I started to think, oh, maybe I am a bit different, which again, back then was, a little bit hard work um so then I, again i just i looked into it more and i did my own development with it um and tried to take bits of what i learned um uh, and then try to just sort of sit with it and just and go really just go with my intuition you know yes so um it wasn't successful then going to a spiritualist church you've mentioned the self-development so how do you feel that your ability and I'm, we're not doubting it. I'm sure the, no, no. <laughs> I'm sure the the viewers are enjoying the story. How it sounds very similar to a form of spiritual healing. Yeah. Because you obviously got you say you've got people from the spirit world standing with you. You know they're talking to you. So and you know you're not crazy because <laughs> <laughs> you've started this <laughs> successful company. But how is your ability different from? others you know using your experience of what you've heard of you know normal spirit if it's yeah. such a thing as normal spiritual healing yeah like sort of an everyday person spiritual healing yeah so the, the difference in the ability that i've got um is for some reason i've got an ability to and i'd say the word morph but morph into someone else's energy so a lot of my clients and before i actually started the company i did a health and well-being company which was based on um, holistic therapies only, no beauty, it was all meditation, relaxation. And I had nearly 2,500 clients then, and that was all word of mouth. And what I learned then to describe exactly what it is, is I have an ability to morph into someone's energy and talk about the parts that they don't really address. So what a lot of my clients used to say is, it's like counseling in reverse. So they would just come in, I'd sit, pop my hands on them, or just tune in, however it came. And I didn't get visitors and I didn't get anything. I just had this feeling of what they were going through. And it was almost as if their memories became my memories, their feelings became my feelings. But in such a way that, for example, maybe I would get someone in that had a problem with a partner and they come for me for a reading to see where that was going. I, thought, I say to everyone, I don't do fortune telling and I don't do good information. What I do do is I get to the nitty gritty parts of you. And how I explain it is, if everybody's energy is a, is a sphere around them, all these little things that come up, anything that bothers your energy, anything that implements it or, or has an effect on it, leaves tiny little grains of dust. And I class it as, and I say this analogy to everybody, imagine you sat in your front room every single day. You wouldn't notice the dust build up. But if I walked into your front room, I'd notice the dust build up. And I always say I come in and spring clean energy. Now, the interesting part about it is, 
what you might think I'm about to read to you, so the example given was someone coming in with a relationship problem, that specific incident, all I could see in my mind was there was a staircase and a little girl on a staircase getting bullied. And even though the, the lady sat in sitting was just like, I can't even remember that. I explained it in detail, went through it. And it was a, an incident that had happened when she was younger. The energy that we'd cleared from all them years back then directly translated into what she was going through there. And that's, yeah. as random as that sounds, I always say I go in and spring clean energy. And I, I'm not sure how it works. I just kind of go with it. But I don't seem to be a psychic reader. I don't seem to be someone that gives you good news. I don't tell fortunes. And I don't bring through people that have passed. I seem to be able to work with you as a person and clean all this energy off and get you back to basics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It, it, it sounds absolutely marvellous. And there must be other young people, old people, children, going through the same things. And I find, whether it's what you're doing you know, or with mediumship, that I don't know. It, it, people tend to look at it as if the children are strange. You know, how many children oh, yeah. have imaginary friends? And, you know, they sit there talking to them. I remember one little girl, not that I worked with as a medium, that I knew. And she used to go in a cupboard and she'd be talking uh, to this little boy. I forget the little boy's name, but talking away. He was a member of the family, so I'm not going to mention him. Yeah. <laughs> and they were talking to this little boy and everybody's saying she was silly. But then when they spoke to the grandmother, she said to the little girl, well, what's the little boy's name? And she told her, and it had been a child that she'd lost many years ago that the little girl never knew about. And then we went to stay there one night it was down in Portsmouth and this, I was lying in bed and my son was asleep next to me or in a cot on the, you know, on the floor. Mm -hmm. And I saw this little boy walk, through, you know, in front of me and I thought, who's that? Oh, Martin's out of bed. And I thought, in a minute, he's a baby, he can't walk. Yeah. <laughs> and then I realised he wasn't at the foot of the bed, he was walking through the bed. Now, if I'd have been oh. a child, if oh, I'd have been a child, yeah. I'd have thought, What's going on? I can see this little boy. I can talk to him. I know his name. So do you think it's a gift that other people have got and could they develop it like you've developed it? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've learned a lot of things. And what, what I've done in, in the years, I mean, this is, gosh, I'm 32, nearly 33 now. And this is when I was like 17, 18, that I didn't understand it. So I've had a lot of time in the meantime learning and developing. But one of the things that I've learned is like what you're saying there, when you sit and listen with a spiritualist and they can see spirit, hear spirit, it's, it's all very similar. And then you come along yourself and that, that isn't the same. What I think the ability that I've got, and I've been told this a couple of times, is you know we talk about the angels and the archangels and the presences that are a little bit higher than that? Yeah. Sometimes I always think that, I wonder if they kind of come down. And I've said for a long time that I think, Think I feel in dimensions and what I think I've managed to do because I've always had an ability to see and sense energy as well and I think this ability kind of comes in in the sense of I go into the sort of the genetics of a person's energy and that's why I think if there'll be a few people out there that will have a similar ability to me but because they're not getting spirit and they're not getting contact and they're not getting voices in the mind I don't think that they'll realize it and I think that there might even be troubled children to be honest because that's what yeah. I started at first because you you don't know and it isn't this isn't something that someone comes along and goes oh I'll just have a card reading and it's fine because a lot of spiritualists as well when we tune in they they struggle to read a lot of what's going on with me meaning that I end up kind of again back in a very basic sort of way thinking well I've got no direction and all of a sudden, I then learned when I was younger that there's, there's different levels to this, you know, there's different areas. And when you start to open your mind and explore stuff, it is, it's beautiful what else is out there. So it's not always just sort of one track. If people talk about this, it's kind of like this. And there's, and there's everything. And I do think a lot of people will have a very, very similar ability to mine because I believe that we are all very energy-based. Yeah. And I think a lot of it's like when you've got children, Usually the children that have got uh, mental health problems, we'll say, or personal problems, usually them children are very open to energy, not spirit, but energy. And that's one of the things that I've tried to kind of teach. And I've, 
dealt with a lot of children in the past because I think that children are open to energy and we shut them off quite quite early on and I think those that are if they can't understand what they're feeling and it isn't a spirit connection and it's just genuinely their energy is very very open I think that them children need to be kind of told that you know this is this is all right and as they grow they might not fit into that box and I just I think it's like a modern day way of healing really yes so, it sounds wonderful and I'm sure you've helped a lot of people but we are coming towards the end of the interview and I can't ask you the usual question which is how would you advise somebody to develop the mediumship <laughs> So what I'm going to ask you is a similar question. For someone new having similar experiences coming in, what advice would you give? Trust. And, and I, do, I do mean trust. Um, things like, and I know this is kind of the, the standard, you know, you might get introduced to a book, you might see something. My knowledge and, and learning ability has gone from everything from self-development, and I'm now reading quantum physics, and what I'm learning is I went through self-development stages. Uh, I looked at psychology things, sociology, anatomy. I looked into epigenetics, neuroscience, and I went all the way through. And I've landed because they all link hand in hand. I've now landed at quantum physics and metaphysics. And when you get to the top of these scales, you realize that they all talk about the bottom and the energy. And they start talking about the fundamentals of life and what they tell you. And if I could give any advice, it's this. What they tell you and all the all the quantum physics books that you want to read say the universe is still our best guess so don't be yeah. put in a box of stuff if you're thinking or feeling something and it doesn't fit in just explore it you know if you're thinking someone is guiding you or you're speaking or you're just feeling things just sit with it and it's not a case of asking it to go because that's never worked for me and i wish someone told me that when i was younger it's a case of sitting with it and you've got to know you. If you know you, and if you could do anything at all, I'd say self-develop first, learn who you are and what, what triggers you, and then you'll know in any surrounding, whether that's you or them. Because if I walk into a surrounding now and feel anxious, I know that that's someone in the room. And I just go, oh, I'm not it. And then it kind of comes and goes. It's just, it's just this energy flow. And if I could advise... It, would, it wouldn't even be meditate. It would just be sit and listen to the, to the feelings that you get because all of a sudden you'll start realizing when they change and you'll notice patterns and things and it just, it becomes beautiful. It really does. I mean, I used to think I was crazy for a while and now I'm pretty okay thinking I'm fine. <laughs> now you're sure you're crazy. <laughs> well, yeah, this is it. You know One thing I will say, everybody that says it's their education. Now, ring me and ask me for advice. Everybody. So... Just go with it because there's a lot there's a lot of people out there that have let the surrounding areas just dilute this down. Please don't. I have I've and I'll just share something with you. When you start helping people and you get a phone call off them and say that they were thinking about suicide and they've stopped because of something that you've done, I cannot tell you how rewarding it is. And even if you want to do that to one person, or even if one person rings you and says that you made them feel better or you lifted something it's that's it that's that's where you need to be and anything after that's a bonus anyway so just go with with you because everyone they've said on the why be a copy everybody's got something unique it's like a footprint and a, a thumbprint sorry whatever your ability is that's unique to you so take bits from everyone and and tailor it to yourself definitely yeah and and, and you maybe want to add something there because uh, all forms of these kind of gifts, mediumship, what you do, you know, the, the all kinds, healing, all of it. Anybody that helps someone. And I remember when I did a service at a church, and in my philosophy, I was using David Beckham and his wife as an example of, you know, how everybody sees them and they want to be like them. Oh. You've got to be yourself and believe in yourself. And it, yeah. it was longer than that, but it went. the philosophy went on. It's about 11 o'clock at night, somebody phoned me, and I'm still friends with this lady now. She phoned me and she said, I just want to tell you, you saved my life with your philosophy. I was going to kill myself. I was coming to church to say bye-bye. So, oh, it's, you know. it's, it's crazy, isn't it? And it's, you know, and do you know what as well? Telling people that everybody else, no one's got it together. Like, you look at people and think that. And I said earlier about having that many clients. 
I've had people that have got absolutely nothing that I've given free things to because they've, they've come and said, like, look, I've got, I've got nothing. And I've had people that are multi, multi millionaires. I've got one billionaire client and they all fall into the same category. And when you strip back everything, we are all still just human beings with yeah. energy and atoms. And, you know, we look at them and they look at us and it, it's just not what it seems. And I, and I wish one of the things that I want from this company and stick with me because in the next couple of years, I'm going to do it. Definitely. <laughs> one of the things that I want to do is say like, no one's okay. And that's okay because we all just need that that time just to say, do you know what? I just don't feel right today and, and admit yeah. it because we all need to admit defeat sometimes. And it just, yeah. it relieves it, you know? Emma, it's been lovely interviewing you. You're full of energy. You talk about energy. You're full of energy. And it's, in fact, that came out in your reading. It's, it's, and it's just been a lovely to talk to you. I'm sure the viewers have found it interesting. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. So I do thank you for coming to be on the couch with me this morning. Ladies very and gentlemen, welcome. Emma Cook. Thank you very much. You've been on the couch with Martin Colcliffe and his guest, Emma Cook, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.